The FPS is a group of member companies working within the geotechnical and ground engineering sector that work together to drive change within the industry to improve health and safety, well-being, sustainability, commercial and technical issues. There have been a series of incidents of large plant items overturning in the last few years and the near misses are even more common. These may or may not have been due to issues with the working platform, but it's a good place to start. The stability of track plant is fundamentally dependent upon the provision of a suitable and sufficient working platform. It must be properly designed and installed to a recognised standard. Whilst the same type of rig may be operated by different companies, the forces generated may differ due to the specific operating configuration of the rig and or any modifications that have been made. What is a working platform when related to piling? It's a ground supported platform designed, installed and tested to safely support the heavy equipment for the purpose of geotechnical works. The working platform is the foundation for a piece of machinery that may weigh anything from 5 to more than 180 tonnes. Although stable when on a firm surface, a small soft spot can be sufficient to unbalance the rig and cause it to topple over. The platform includes access ways, ramps and storage areas. General temporary works requirements and procedures. The principal contractor has a duty under CDM regulations to ensure that all the activities are carried out by suitably qualified persons and this includes the platform design, installation and maintenance. As geotechnical contractors we have a responsibility to provide accurate information to allow the design, install and maintenance of the working platform throughout our works. The Working Platform Certificate in essence, the FPS developed the Working Platform Certificate, or the WPC, working closely with the Health and Safety Executive and Principal Contractors in order to raise awareness of the importance of providing a proper platform for plant which will work on it, and the importance of maintaining it during the course of the contract. The Working Platform Certificate asks for a signature from the Principal Contractor to confirm their awareness of these requirements. It does not state who will carry out these activities, as sometimes this may even be the piling contractor. Is this just a way for the piling contractor to transfer his own responsibilities? The Working Platform Certificate does not seek to transfer any responsibilities. Both the principal contractor and the geotechnical contractor already have responsibilities under the construction, design and management regulations, Health and Safety at Work Act or under the specific contract between the parties. The use of the Working Platform Certificate is a way of highlighting these responsibilities by increasing awareness of platform safety and the importance of maintaining the platform in good condition throughout the course of the contract. There is also a duty of care on the geotechnical contractor to flag up any unsafe conditions that are identified either before or during the works. If there is a defect in the platform, then the geotechnical specialist cannot simply rely on the platform certificate and assume everything will be okay. The WPC isn't required by law, so why should I sign it? The working platform does not impose any additional responsibility it merely confirms that the principal contractor has fulfilled his obligations under the CDM. In this respect, it's not unlike a permit to dig, which is widely used, but is also not a statutory requirement. The initiative has the support of the Health and Safety Executive. This is our Bauer Keller joint venture where we've got uh, 13 rigs and six cranes operating all simultaneously installing a combination of rotary for uh, pre-bore and large diameter piles and then you've also got CFA for the smaller diameter pile. We've got a mixture of rigs across the site from Keller and from Bauer and from Expanded and from other manufacturers all working in one location due to the size and the complexity of the project.
why working platforms fail. There are many factors that may lead to the failure of a working platform. The first thing that we as contractors do to the working platform is drill holes for it. If these bores are not adequately filled or bores with low concrete are not backfilled correctly, the platform can become unsafe. Over the time, the platform can be affected from adverse weather, for example, flooding. Trenches for services or excavations dug for obstructions that have not been reinstated to the original design criteria can cause local soft spots. Materials used to construct the working platform not in line with the design is another reason for failure. Congested areas of plant or working sequences that require repeated tracking and spragging in the same locations can wear away the platform. Areas with high density of piles like building cores that require repeated tracking over a period of time can cause instability. Overflight in the piles that removes excessive amounts of materials from around the bore can undermine the rig itself. Inadequate lengths of casing can cause the collapse in the vicinity of the rig or the personnel in attendance. Failure can also come from inadequate training for the geotechnical operatives. Training on the rig's capabilities and functions, lack of awareness of training for the operatives around the machine in relation to the condition of the working platform. Presence of unknown cavities, either man-made or geotechnical anomalies, highlights the need for a good site investigation. It can be seen that due to the complex nature of the works that we carry out, it is imperative that we highlight where we can encounter these issues to allow the risks to be assessed and the design to take them into account. Providing the rig loadings may not be enough. Platform design. Design requirements for a working platform should start in the pre-construction planning stage of the project. Temporary works information should be included at tender stage. The working platform certificate does not identify who designs it, but outlines considerations to be made during the design. For example, different techniques require different platform considerations. For example, slurry produced whilst drilling with support fluid. Platform designs must be based on the actual rig loading supplied by the piling contractor in the correct configuration, correct drill radius with the correct process equipment. These loadings should be provided by the specialist geotechnical contractor in advance to inform the design. If the rig changes, then it's important that the platform design is reassessed. For tracked equipment, this is not just the dead weight of the machine spread over the contact area or the surface area of the tracks. The FPS rig track pressure calculation tool can be used to determine the rig loadings generated under the tracks and any stabilising footplates. The FPS run workshops on how to use the tool. It is a simple user-friendly tool that allows us to assess loadings for all types of machines envisaged in the operations and all orientations of the rigs or cranes masked relative to the direction of the tracks. There may also be considerations of future use by follow-on trades or even by trades whilst the geotechnical works are being carried out. It is essential that the design accounts for the full life of the platform. First section of the certificate requires the name of the individual that has carried out the design of the platform. It does not ask for the design nor the installation criteria. The act of asking for a name is a poignant one. Few people would write a name on the form unless they were satisfied that they had carried out the design and were competent to do so. This is not imposing any additional liability on the principal contractor. It merely confirms that a temporary works design has been done and who completed it. We need the support equipment as well. So you've got things like the cherry picker are going to impose some loads on the ground that we need to bear in mind when we're thinking about the platforms and the space that we need to operate in. And the I also have, have smaller wheels that, yeah. that will fit down a Definitely fit down, fit down a nice pile. Platform installation. The working platform certificate does not define who installs it, but outlines considerations to be made during the installation. Someone should have clearly defined responsibility to install the platform to the design. Platforms should also be suitable for the operatives to walk and work on, and not present trip hazards from large cobbles or unsuitable materials such as steel from demolition crushed concrete. 
Poor definition of the edge of the working platform is a major cause of track plant instability. It is good practice that the working platform should extend at least two metres beyond the edge of the pile position for a safe working area for the specialist personnel and attendant plant. Where having to work within this two metre zone is unavoidable, the designer is to be informed of the requirement to design the platform for working up to its edge. If the working platform is to be constructed or removed in phases whilst piling works are ongoing, then the extent of the platform must be clearly defined on the certificate and, in accordance with good practice, physically on site. Where access ramps are used to move between working levels, they must be of sufficient gradient and width to allow the plant to move safely within the stability constraints of the machine. Ramps must be in a straight line between working areas. Rigs and cranes cannot change direction on ramps. Where a change in direction is required, this must be on a flat level platform. The design thickness of the platform may have a wearing layer on top to allow for the consolidation during use or degradation during spore removal. The use of marker layers may be considered in heavily trafficked or repeatedly visited areas highlighting where the minimum design depth for the platform is reached after multiple uses. Platform testing. The working platform certificate does not define who tests it, but outlines considerations to be made. Someone should have a clearly defined responsibility to test the platform. There are many different ways that the platform can be tested. The method, the frequency and the criteria should be in accordance with the designer's requirements. Testing of the formation may be a requirement of design and may even help to make a more economical and sustainable solution. Platform maintenance. The working platform certificate does not define who maintains it, but outlines considerations to be made. Someone should have a clearly defined responsibility to maintain the platform. Even the best laid platforms deteriorate through use and over time. Additionally, excavations, trenches or other holes dug in the platform surface must be properly backfilled to avoid creating a soft spot that might give way under the tracks of a piling rig or other plant or equipment. The edge of the platform must always be clearly defined and should be regularly inspected to ensure that there has been no degradation over time. On the second page of the working platform certificate is the working platform regular inspection log. The working platform should be regularly inspected by a competent individual appointed by the principal contractor. For example, the temporary works coordinator or supervisor. The platform should be inspected throughout its design life, after adverse weather and after any reinstatement or any works which might have modified it. Any damage or inadequate areas identified should be reinstated to the design standard. Once complete, the signed log and amended layout drawing should be issued. Key points to note from this video. For us as contractors, once we have sent our rig loading information, our responsibilities do not stop. For our clients, once the platform has been installed, their responsibilities do not stop. The working platform must be regularly inspected maintained, modified, repaired and reinstated to the ADS design condition throughout the period when the equipment is working on site. A fully completed copy of the working platform certificate, including drawings and the inspection log would indicate that the working platform process is working well. The piling operatives are likely to be the first people to witness any degradation in the working platform, so challenge from the site team should be welcomed. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit the FPS website.